My dear friends, greetings from OLPS, our beautiful church, our grace-filled sanctuary. It's a wonderful opportunity to connect with you today as we reflect on the challenge of day-to-day -day living in the midst of the pandemic for all of us. It would be an understatement for me to say these are indeed challenging times. How true. Everything has changed for all of us. What was just so normal and what we were so used to, our rhythm of life in January, February last year, 2020, is no longer the same. All of us, because of the pandemic, are challenged to live differently, to do things differently, to think, to feel, to act, perhaps in ways that we never ever imagined. And yet in the midst of all of this, there are worries too. There are fears, there are anxieties, Will I get affected with COVID? Will a family member be affected with COVID? Or for those of us like myself who have already been affected, will I have post-COVID symptoms? How do I cope with these post-COVID symptoms? Or maybe there are some who have lost a loved one or whose loved ones are no longer the same because of the severe effects of COVID. Or perhaps some of you are struggling with the worry of finances. How do we manage in these times? Perhaps not much income coming in. With the way the government is, not much interest on our deposits. How will we manage in the face of a big medical crisis and then there is being cooped up there's being just locked in for so long months on end unable to meet to go out and relax have a cup of coffee with a friend visit another or have someone visiting over a cup of tea or a cake or snacks things you just took for granted are not there anymore. And even if they were there, we'd be worried. Then the frustrating, if we have to go out, the frustration of wearing a mask for so long, and the pain of that, and the irritation of that, and of course, the forgetfulness of taking a mask. Typical me, so often I've stepped out and then I realize, oh, I didn't get my mask, so I have to run up back to my room, this is all that's facing us. And yet in the midst of this and perhaps much more, which I don't want to draw out, but you know for yourself, we're challenged. Challenged to live. And yet live we must. How do we live then in these challenging times? Some of us, I've grown old. Not too long ago, I was visiting Bangalore. And uh, when I was a seminarian, I had a wonderful football coach and he coached us through the 80s into the early 90s. And our seminary team won all the matches we played because of his coaching. His name is Lawrence. And I met him after ages. And he was in our Holy Ghost Church compound and with him was his wife. And... Uh, Spontaneously, he said to me, brother, how are you? He was meeting me since 1991. And he always called me brother because I was a seminary in those days. And then his wife looked at me and said, oh, father, you've grown very, very old. <laughs> I had a good laugh. Of course, the last they saw me was, well, I was 26 years old. <laughs> 30 years hence, I'm 56. 
and clearly I have grown old. And it's a fact. I didn't take offense. Lawrence was very upset that his wife's... But it was a spontaneous statement. Sincere. She said what is the truth. Ten years ago, there were a lot of things I did. Gee, I can't do them anymore. Um, I have creaking sounds in my knees. I can't kneel. Um, I don't have the same pace. I tire easily. And COVID, in spite of all of this, has increased, as it were, the aging process. So that's for all of us. You're not alone. We're all in this together. But we're called to live. And live we must. I believe we must live with humor in these challenging times. I believe we must live with gratitude and with creativity. Humor, gratitude and creativity are a necessity to cope in these challenging times. For us Christians, we have a very soothing reminder how to live in challenging times. One of the most difficult aspects of living in challenging times is coping with anxiety, worry. What's going to happen? How will things work? How will I meet that situation? Worry, anxiety, tension. Well, let's take a listen to Jesus. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, he teaches his disciples how to deal in the midst of challenging times with worry, anxiety, fears, apprehensions, and tensions. It's one of the most beautiful passages we have in our scriptures. Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, about what your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body, more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow, nor do they reap or store away in barns and yet the heavenly father feeds them are you not much more valuable than the birds which of you by worrying can add a single hour to his or her life why do you worry about your clothes See the lilies of the field. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and gone tomorrow, will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? For he says, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given unto you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough troubles of its own. That's quite an amazing teaching from Jesus. No wonder St. Paul much later in the letter to the Philippians 4, 6 can say, and I quote from St. Paul, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So from St. Paul, this 
for a Christian is the antidote to worry and anxiety. We want to, we need to present it to God. Present our worries, acknowledge them. Present our tensions, acknowledge them. Present our fears and apprehensions, acknowledge them and present them to God. Give it to someone equipped and willing to take it all from us. He is the best equipped and he is willing to take it from us. He says, come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened and I will give you rest. Someone once said, don't tell me worry doesn't help. Whenever I worry about something, it never seems to happen. How true that is. Doesn't it sound familiar? It does to me. Because I think of my life, how often I have spent minutes, hours, days, weeks sometimes, worrying about a challenging situation in my life, my family, or the congregation, my province, my community. And then that which I was worrying about never happened. And then I pull my hair or pull my beard and I say, so much of energy, time wasted, worrying about something that actually didn't happen. There was a famous writer and he was in his study. He seemed to be very heavy hearted. He picked up his pen and he started writing on a sheet of paper. This is what he wrote and I'll quote. Last year, I had surgery and my gallbladder was removed. I had to stay stuck to the bed due to this surgery for a long time. In the hospital and later for weeks at home. Second, the same year I reached the age of 60 and had to give up my favorite job. I had spent 30 years of my life in this publishing company and now I was retired. He went on. Third, the same year I experienced the sorrow of the death of my father. My heart broke. He went on. Fourth, in the same year my son failed in his medical exam because he had a car accident. He had to stay in bed in the hospital with cast for several weeks and so couldn't write his exams. The destruction of the car was total another loss. And at the end he wrote, Alas, it was such a horribly bad year. Still holding his pen, his shoulders drooping, his head down, his chin resting against his chest, breathing heavily. His wife walked in the room and first glance she saw him, clearly very somber mood, dull pain on his face. And she tiptoed behind him and she looked over his shoulder at the page at what he had written. And quietly she left the study, went to her room, pulled out a sheet of paper and she wrote something down. And then she came back and she placed what she had written in front of her husband on his writing desk. This is what she wrote. Last year, I finally got rid of my gallbladder due to which I had spent years in excruciating pain. What a relief. Second, I turned 60 last year with sound health and got retired from my job. Now, I have plenty of time to utilize to do that which I always wanted to do, to write and write and make a contribution to society, especially children. Third, the same year my father, at the age of 95, without depending on anyone, 
or without causing anyone trouble, least of all us, without any critical condition, gently breathed his last and went to his creator. The same year, fourth, God blessed my son with new life. My car was destroyed, but my son stayed healthy, alive, without any major disability. He's now back again at his studies. She wrote the same things that her husband wrote, but from a different perspective. It's not happiness that makes us grateful. On the contrary, it's gratitude that makes us happy. And yet as I look back at my own life, last year this time, I was about to leave Germany. I was stuck in Germany in the midst of COVID. Little did I realize on the 8th of March, it was Women's Day, I was leaving Mumbai for Vienna for a conference with a lot to do when I came back. Retreat to preach, missions to preach, exams to conduct for my seminarians, a very tight schedule only to be stuck in Germany without a clue when I would get the opportunity to come back home. And strangely, in the midst of all of that, in the midst of all of that, six months nearly, I had a hell of a lot to give God thanks for. As a matter of fact, I cannot even fill one page, two pages, three pages. I might need a book to write down all that I have given thanks to God for, for that year. Last year in Germany, in the raging pandemic and the threat of COVID. It's at this stage of our lives a year almost and a half of the pandemic on first wave, second wave, and who knows, third wave, Delta variant. It's time now to put our spiritual money where our mouths have been for decades. For we have all sung, haven't we? What a friend we have in Jesus. All to Jesus I surrender. Lord, you are my everything. It's time to put our spiritual money where our mouths have been. To live trusting in Jesus our friend. In the Lord our rock and refuge, our strength and our consolation. Today our hope and our strength in these challenging times lies in our loving Heavenly Father. The words of Jesus, be anxious for nothing. God is with you in all your needs at this very moment. I'd like to share with you a story that touched me quite some time ago. As a matter of fact, I read this in German last year in this little town of Hollenburg where I was cooped up, actually where I was protected, safe and sound, in a convent of nuns. I translated it from German and this is what I read. There was a beautifully, very expensively dressed lady who complained to a psychiatrist that she felt that her whole life was coming apart. It was empty, it was meaningless. So the lady went at her psychiatrist's recommendation to visit a counselor to look for happiness. The counselor listened to the lady and then she said, do you mind if I bring someone to talk to you? The lady said, if it's going to help, why not? So the counselor opened the door and called out to Maria, who was the cleaning lady, the janitor, cleaning the floors. 
and she called Maria in and said to the wealthy lady, I'm going to ask Maria here to tell you her story, how she found happiness. All I want you to do is to listen to her. And so she asked Maria, tell us your story, Maria. And Maria began. She said, well, a couple of years ago, my husband died of a brain disease. If that was not enough, three months later, my only son was killed in a car crash. I had nobody. I had nothing left. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I never smiled at anybody. There was no reason to smile anymore. I even thought of taking my own life. I kept the sleeping pills ready. I kept the poison ready. I just didn't have the guts to do it. One evening, returning home from work, in the biting cold, my head sunk. Suddenly, I saw a kitten following me. I didn't even have the energy or the strength or the least intention to shove it away. It followed me from work right to my doorstep. As I climbed the steps to the door, it climbed up behind me. I opened the door, it followed me. It was biting cold, it was freezing. So I went into the kitchen, poured some milk, put it in the micro, warmed it a bit, put it in a bowl and placed it before the kitten. In no time the kitten had lapped up all the milk. And so I poured a little more and it lapped that up too. And then looking at me, smacking its lips, it purred. And then it rubbed itself one way against my legs and another way and again and again and I smiled for the first time after months gradually that evening I stopped to think Maria said if helping a little kitten could make me smile Maybe doing something for someone in need would actually make me happy. So the very next day, I went to the grocery store and picked up some eggs and flour and baking soda and a few other chocolate chips. And I baked some chocolate chips cookies. And I took them over to a gentleman who was bedridden a few houses down the street. And we sat and held a great conversation and he was so grateful. That was the beginning for me as I did little things for people. My life suddenly was worth living. Every day I tried to do something nice for someone. It made me happy to see people happy. Today I don't know of anyone who sleeps and eats better in the world than myself. I found happiness in giving it to others. When the rich lady heard this, she began to sob. And through the tears in her eyes and her sighs, she said she had everything that money could buy, but she had lost the things that money could not buy. She had lost the things that money could not buy. My dear friends, the beauty of life does not depend on how happy you are, but on how happy others can be because of you. So even though the pandemic is raging, first wave, second wave, third wave, delta variant and no matter what, we can choose to be happy. It's a choice in coming out of ourselves, 
and bringing a smile to someone's face. Happiness is not a destination. It's a journey. Happiness is not tomorrow. It is now. Happiness is not dependency. It is a decision. Happiness is what you are, not what you have. So even though we have the pandemic, even though we have little, even though we have lost a lot and lost so much, we can still choose to be happy because it is us. How do we live happily daily? I'm going to suggest a couple of things, simple things, to live in these challenging times. First, gratitude. When you wake up in the morning, first be grateful. That's what I do. As soon as I wake up in the morning from my room and brush my teeth and clean myself, around four in the morning, sometimes a little earlier, I'm blessed and grateful because not even 25 steps away from my room is a blessed sacrament, our chapel. And I go there with my list of gratitude. Thank you, Lord, for the good night's sleep. Thank you, Lord, even though it's pouring rain, I'm safe and protected. Thank you, Lord, for the new day. Thank you, Lord, for the many blessings. And my list is long suddenly. There's so much to be grateful for. Begin the day with gratitude. You will find the gratitude list. As I said, six months in Germany, gee, I have pages and pages on my gratitude list. So much to be thankful for in the midst of the pandemic. And even as I go on, I have so much to be thankful for. I'm a COVID survivor. I had COVID. But, as my doctor said to me, Father, you're lucky. You didn't have the symptoms. You had COVID without the symptoms. Now your body has natural antibodies to fight COVID. I'm grateful, Lord, for COVID. You've given me natural antibodies to fight COVID. If we stop to look, we'll be surprised how much we can be grateful for every day. Second, remember God's faithfulness. As you look back at the past, don't look at the negative. The negative is over. The past is gone. It's not worth remembering. But what we remember is God's faithfulness to us. God's care, God's protection, God's presence. I look back at my past last year. I would never have accomplished as much I accomplished with writing, with theology, with spirituality, with recordings, with learning how to conduct a Zoom meeting and run a Zoom meeting and use technology, things that I was scared of because of God's fidelity to me. God was faithful to me in a foreign country. He looked after me. He took care of every need. I didn't have anything wanting, food, drink, clothing, shelter, protection, environment, Wi-Fi, 100%, strong Wi-Fi. God's fidelity. God is faithful. Count your blessings. God is faithful. Third, find someone to love. Look for someone to love, to reach out to. Someone whom you can feel or you can make them feel better today. Every day. Maybe your grandchild. Maybe your son. Maybe your daughter. Maybe a friend. Maybe the watchman down below. Maybe the maid. Maybe the maid's children. Maybe the bhajiwala. Somebody whom you can show a little kindness to. It'll make a big difference. Fourth, continue if you don't have, take up a hobby. If you have a hobby, continue with it. If you don't have one, take it up. It's great to live in challenging times with a hobby. Many of you do Sudoku. Others read, others write, others compose poems or music. It doesn't matter what it is. Take up a hobby. 
in these challenging times it draws your attention it lifts up your spirits do what you like to do cooking many are trying out new dishes it can be anything you all know father Ozzy you know father Tony you know father Franklin Ozzy before the pandemic till the age of 90 he had a hobby preparing short reflections and homilies typing them out and emailing them to over 200 people every day almost till the age of 90 that kept him going his mind alert despite all the frailties of age or take father Tony in the pandemic he couldn't go he used to go regularly to visit the homebound now he couldn't go out because it was dangerous do you know what hobby he took up he decided since he couldn't go out and visit people he'd bring them in his heart and mind to the Blessed Sacrament and so he would pray for people sitting in the chapel and because he couldn't go up to the chapel because of his weakened heart he used to sit in the common room which is the same floor of his room and look at the picture of our mother perpetual health and pray at least five rosaries in the morning and another six rosaries in the evening amazing it was a creative way of loving a creative way of reaching out a creative way of using his time father franklin father franklin in the midst of the pandemic took up teaching he would sit with his mask on teaching the son and daughter of our houseboy so well he taught them that they did wonderfully well in their exams the pandemic didn't dampen their spirits they chose something to do which gave them fulfillment finally thank God every night you begin the day with gratitude end the day with gratitude thank the Lord for the day that you're alive despite everything thank the Lord for the people who called you who messaged you who connected with you thank the Lord for your family for your friends thank the Lord for your health despite everything begin the day with gratitude look back at the past on the fidelity of God to you look for someone to love be creative with a hobby something to catch your fancy and spend your energies end the day with gratitude we can live if we choose to live with humor with gratitude with creativity in these challenging times let me end with these words O oh, love that follows all my way I yield my frickling torch to thee my heart restores the borrowed ray that in thy sunshine's blaze its day may brighter fairer be and there's a lovely quotation I took from Mark Twain for you he says age is an issue of mind over matter if you don't mind it doesn't matter age is an issue of mind over matter if you don't mind it doesn't matter bow your heads now let us pray together loving father Help me to look for joy and meaning in my life today despite the challenges. Sometimes my day seems empty and without promise. I know that even then you are with me. I want to live in this day. May I see the way. I wait for the healing ointment of your presence in my life. You are my good friend. Thank you for this day my strength and my redeemer amen let us turn to our blessed mother and pray to her that beautiful prayer hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen and may the lord 
with his love and goodness reveal his presence as Emmanuel to you watch over you and protect you the blessing of Almighty God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you always take care as I said challenging times do not worry we approach them we live with humor with gratitude with creativity God bless